Today's video is going to be a follow-up on our basic guides on laptops and desktops. However, this time the topics that we are going to detail will be more in-depth. Therefore, if you are not interested in computers, the topics we're going to discuss may be a bit confusing to you. So I'd recommend at least checking your own PC to have a basic understanding before watching this video. By the way, if you like this video, I'll share the second part next week. So if you are ready, let's get started. Let's start with CPU namings because they determine if a PC is power or efficiency focused. What do the letters at the end of CPUs mean? For Intel desktop processors, the Intel naming convention consists of four elements, brand, model, generation, and TDP values. Firstly, you have the brand. Intel Core is relatively old but very powerful segment, while Ultra is the latest model that focuses on efficiency from Intel. The number indicates the generation, and the letter at the end indicates the expected TDP value and the form factor it's aimed for. K, X, and XE indicate that the CPU is unlocked and can operate at higher clock speeds than the advertised maximum limit. This capability is known as overclocking. As long as you can keep its temperature under control, it will keep reaching higher speeds. In laptops, you can identify overclock-enabled CPUs with the letters HK and HX. While they can't offer the clock speeds of a desktop K line, HK and HX CPUs are also able to overclock. But before moving on to other processor letters, I want to tell you something. You know we spend quite a lot of time on web browsers, yet based on our workflow, we can't decide which is the best web browser. I have a fantastic recommendation for you in this regard. Opera. Opera, in my opinion, is the most practical, fast, and reliable among web browsers. It boasts many innovative features powered by AI, but the one that impressed me the most is Tab Islands. As you know, I write the scripts before creating videos. During script writing, I use multiple browser tabs for my research. With Opera's Tab Islands feature, I can easily group and organize these tabs, making my work faster and allowing me to find the tab I need quickly. Another useful feature of Opera is the built-in ad blocker. With the built-in ad blocker, you can experience an ad-free and smooth web surfing experience without the need for any additional extensions. Additionally, Opera offers a free VPN. With Opera's free VPN, you can hide your IP address, preventing third parties from tracking you and stealing your data. Furthermore, Opera has its built-in AI Aria. With Aria, you can summarize texts, brainstorm new ideas, and instantly access up-to-date information. Also, if you're switching from another browser, you can easily transfer all your data to Opera. And the best part about Opera is that all of these features are free. You can access Opera and all these features for free from the link I've left in the description and comments. So where were we? We were talking about the letters found at the end of processors. If there is no letter at the end of the product, it means that it is a locked CPU, which means you can't overclock it. These CPUs are designed to work within advertised power limits. For most users, they are an excellent option because they perform very well with minimal extra spending. In laptops, locked CPUs are typically identified by the letter H. They are usually offered with laptops that come with high resolution and high refresh rate models, but this can vary by region. Therefore, you have to look for display information. The letter F means that the CPU is not able to overclock, and it is not capable of video output because it lacks the integrated graphics card to do so. If you are buying this CPU, you have to buy a GPU as well. KF means that the CPU is capable of overclocking, but doesn't have an integrated GPU like the F line. You need a dedicated GPU for this. They could be a good option if you're interested in relying solely on your dedicated GPU. T and U mean that the CPU is optimized for lighter tasks. They do have integrated GPUs, but are not able to reach higher clock speeds. These products are optimized for longer battery life. Chromebooks that are aimed towards entry-level users use these CPUs. CPU models come with different thread and core counts, power limits, clock speeds, and cache. For Intel, the first thing you'll see is the branding and model. The Intel Core lineup consists of four distinct categories. i3 line. These CPUs are entry-level products that perform well on lower-powered setups. They are mostly used in office or entry-level products. i5 line. The i5 is a more performance-focused line. They offer at least six cores and are a good choice for a gaming rig. Additionally, their cache capacity is usually higher than that of the i3 i7 line. The i7 line is the preferred choice for heavier tasks such as streaming alongside gaming. 
If you are looking for a PC for video editing, the i7 line is the best choice because most editing software requires your PC to have at least 8 cores. They typically have more cache than the i5. In laptops, they can be a sweet spot because they are usually priced better than i9 line laptops while offering similar performance. Intel also has a new line of CPUs focused on efficiency alongside performance called Intel Core Ultra. They can easily be spotted with their branding that indicates their new generation. These CPUs are offered in the mobile segment where both performance and efficiency are important. They belong to a similar branch as the i7 and i5 lines. The i9 line represents the most powerful offerings from the Intel Core lineup. They offer at least 12 cores. These CPUs are the best from the Intel lineup. Whether you're looking for desktop or laptop options, these CPUs can handle very heavy workloads. In the AMD lineup, the naming scheme is similar. First, you'll see the brand and model name like AMD Ryzen 3, 5, 7, and 9. As you can see, this is similar to the Intel Core lineup. As the model number goes up, you'll have more cores, threads, and cache. Just like the Intel products, these are aimed towards different types of users. Also, it's worth mentioning the following. Unlike Intel processors, which can only be overclocked in specific models, all AMD processor models are overclockable. However, your motherboard needs to support this feature. You can overclock your Ryzen processors on motherboards such as B450 or X570. What are core and thread? Do they matter in gaming? If you've ever looked at the specifications of a certain CPU, you'll notice terms like 8 cores 16 threads or 12 cores 24 threads. A core is a subunit of a CPU. Today's CPUs contain more than one core for better performance and power efficiency. A thread count indicates the tasks that a core can handle. In the simplest terms, they act like virtual cores. Almost all programs benefit from this, but the ones that benefit the most are creative programs like Adobe Premiere, Photoshop, DaVinci Resolve, and 3D modeling programs. What is CPU cache? Why is it important? If your CPU is powerful enough, the rate of data that it processes may exceed the bandwidth of your RAM. This basically means that your RAM cannot transfer the data fast enough to the CPU at high speeds. This can cause performance drops and system latency. CPUs have very fast memory modules called cache located near to them. These modules allow for faster data transfers than what your RAM is capable of by itself. Cache is particularly important in use cases where your CPU processes a large amount of data such as 3D modeling, high-resolution video editing, streaming, and AAA gaming. Cache plays a crucial role in improving the efficiency and speed of these tasks by reducing the need to access data from slower RAM, thereby enhancing overall system performance. Now let's move away from the processor and take a look at what we need to know about graphics cards. In GPUs, you need to look for these three features, CUDA core count, VRAM capacity, and wattage limits. Let's start with CUDA cores. What is CUDA core? CUDA cores are the processing units that NVIDIA GPUs use. They were developed during the GTX 800 series. They are similar to CPU cores in their base design. However, they are simpler. They have wider bandwidth and work in parallel. This allows them to process an enormous amount of data in real time. This is very beneficial in graphically demanding tasks such as gaming and 3D modeling. In recent years, CUDA Core's advantage in processing large amounts of data has made NVIDIA GPUs a very good candidate for more unusual tasks, such as running large language models or virtual neural networks for AI systems. AMD has a similar technology called Stream Processors. They are similar to CUDA Cores, but have slightly less processing power. However, their optimization options are wider. In terms of performance, both processors are able to provide a good experience. But this is highly dependent on VRAM, driver support, and optimizations. What is RT Core? An RT Core, short for Ray Tracing Core, is a specialized processing unit found in NVIDIA's RTX series GPUs. RT Cores are specifically designed to accelerate ray tracing, a rendering technique used to generate realistic lighting, shadows, and reflections in 3D graphics. Ray tracing involves simulating the behavior of light as it interacts with objects in a scene, tracing the paths of individual rays of light to determine how they interact with surfaces and objects. 
This process is computationally intensive and traditionally requires significant processing power. With the introduction of RT cores in NVIDIA's RTX series GPUs, real-time ray tracing has become more feasible in gaming and other graphics-intensive applications, allowing for more immersive and visually stunning experiences with realistic lighting and reflections. AMD GPUs are also capable of ray tracing via RT cores. However, NVIDIA has an advantage as they use software optimization to get the best results. What is Tensor Core? Tensor cores are basically a more optimized version of CUDA cores. CUDA cores focus on providing high performance on parallel tasks like rendering or ray tracing. Tensor cores are optimized for AI-based use cases like machine learning, virtual neural networks, and models. They are produced specifically for AI programming. But GPUs like RTX 3000-4000 series also have tensor cores for NVIDIA's DLSS technology. So in a way you are also using these cores. This technology uses AI to increase the resolution and allows you to play at lower settings with high FPS rates. AMD has a similar feature called FSR. It doesn't rely on tensor cores and is open sourced, means you can use it on NVIDIA cards as or older GPUs well, but doesn't always give the same performance because of the possible optimization issues. All right, let's finish the video slowly. As I mentioned, if you really like this video, I'll release the second part soon. Of course, your reaction will determine that. If you liked the video, don't forget to hit the like button. If not, feel free to dislike. Stay mysterious until the next video. Take care and bye.